Hello, this is Michael Soilo with Lit RPG Reviews, and today I will be reviewing Monster Hunt NYC by Harmon Cooper and the audiobook narrated by Jeff Hayes, Annie Ellicott, and the rest of the Sound Booth Theater group. Full disclosure, I am friends with Harmon Cooper and I am friends with Jeff Hayes. Uh, Annie Ellicott will not accept my Facebook friend request. It's probably because I made a retroll. It's definitely because I made a retroll. Uh, so with that out of the way, this uh, review is going to be broken down into three parts. The first one, I'm going to review the audiobook, And the second one, I'm going to review the book in short form with no spoilers. And then in the third part, I'm going to go into the spoilers where I talk about the uh, criticism I have of the book to reflect its final score. If you just want the score, it is four stars out of five. For this book, it is pretty good. It does have a few things that need to be tweaked in it to get it up to that five-star level. So on the audiobook, um, it is not a typical audio narration. This is more like an audio drama or an audio theater. So this is like sound booth theater uh, truly on display. There is continual background music. There are continual sound effects uh, going on pretty much the entire time. The volume leveling is spot on. You never have a problem with the background overwhelming the foreground or if there being sudden jumps and noise. Also, the two narrators, uh, their volume is also leveled. So like in some books that I've listened to, uh, there will be a mismatch in the volume between the two narrators. This one, it sounds uh, superb. So whoever does that on Sound Booth Theater, you are doing an excellent job. Keep up the good work. Um, the standout is Annie Ellicott and her singing in this book. There are a couple of different songs um, that they do the music for and they do the singing for. Uh, she is out freaking standing. Uh, Jeff, not bad, you know, not that bad, but you're, you're kind of like the male singer in Lacuna Coil, like no one cares. Sorry, bro. But I would give that book over or that audio uh, book overall. Uh, five stars out of five. It is incredible. It is an experience. Uh, and it, it is definitely like, I think, the way to enjoy this book. Um, and for some of my criticisms, maybe uh, it could be because the book, the audiobook is so busy that maybe I missed some things, but I don't think so. Um, I think that the audiobook was absolutely phenomenal. Now, the book itself, four stars out of five. Basically, we follow around a musician. His name is Chase Knowles, and uh, he gets a code to a video game uh, on an app called Monster Hunt. And this app is a uh, futuristic VR simulation. All of this stuff takes place within the Proxima Galaxy timeline that Harmon Cooper set up through the feedback loop, The Last Warrior of Unigaya, and all of his other series. I think that for some people this might be a bit of a problem because if you're not familiar with his other works, you will kind of feel dropped in. Uh, one of the criticisms I had with Cherry Blossom Girls, they took too long to get rolling with it. This one is much more like it gets up and running very quickly. Um, the downside to that, of course, is that there is uh, some descriptors that are missing if you aren't familiar with the Proxima Galaxy and his other works. So I think that's a, a little bit of a hindrance for some people. Anyway, he joins the game. He, uh, he immediately gets killed <laughs> upon entering the game by a barbarian. And then he uh, meets the Huntresses that end up becoming part of his harem. This is a very light harem novel. Um, because like there's no sex scenes, there's just mild teasing and flirting and some some contact, but not really um, harem-esque if you're thinking like Daniel Black or one of the more hardcore series out there. Uh, so he gets these two huntresses and they explain to him what the rules of the game are, which basically is every single person is who gets the code and joins the game is called Alpha. The Alpha gets two hunters or huntresses. Um, and also I think there's other characters that are not like male or female that are also part of this thing. And then they get an unlimited number of monsters. If they can capture them, only the alpha can actually do the capture. The huntresses can simply like corner and wound whatever animal it is they're hunting, but it's up to the actual alpha to get that uh, animal. So it's sort of like Pokemon. Uh, once you capture it, it becomes part of your group and then you can use it in different battles or tournaments. Uh, in order to gain money, uh, you gain virtual currency, or to gain special prizes. So that is the spoiler-free version of the book, four out of five stars. Uh, so now I will be going into the spoiler version of this book, where I delve into my specific criticisms that I had of the novel. 
And I've got little notes here, uh, but they're, they're sort of scratchy, so uh, give me a sec. Okay. Uh, probably my the first one is that the MC is very whiny. And what I think was supposed to happen here was that by playing the video game, he was supposed to become more assertive, like supposed to like find himself, but that never really comes through in the book. Um, because the only time where the game makes him more assertive is when he has a confrontation with Thad, who is sort of set up as the antagonist of the story. And he punches Thad, but then that results in him like getting into a lot of trouble. So it didn't seem like the the character arc really flowed the way it was supposed to. It just seems like the characters just like stayed whiny. Another problem, I've touched on this in my spoiler free review, but there is kind of a lack of descriptions. Um, for example, whenever he meets the Huntresses in the first scene and he gets killed by the Barbarian, uh, physically, where is he? Because this seems like the sort of thing that could only take place within one of the VR capsules. But according to the book, he isn't in a VR capsule. The app uh, sort of like downloaded into your brain more or less. And so everything that you're seeing, only you can see it, but it's taking place in the real world. So for certain scenes like the tournaments and for that scene, I'm not sure physically where he's located at. And that's something that might have been, uh, I might have missed because of the audio drama going on uh, and paying attention to that and enjoying that. But uh, I, I didn't know where they were for several of these scenes. And uh, there just seemed to be a lack of descriptions overall and sort of an assumption that you're already familiar with a lot of what was going on from his previous works, which might not be the case for everyone. Um, so MC Whiny, that's 0.25 stars. Lack of descriptors, 0.25 stars taken off. Uh, my next one is why is he playing the game? So whenever I read a lit RPG or a game lit book, one of my big questions is, okay, why don't they just quit, right? What is driving them forward? What do they want that this video game is going to uh, supply to them? So books that are sort of the isekai sort of genre where they're just transported away to another world or like Viridian Gate Online where the world's destroyed and he's basically uh, living out his days in the VR game or uh, Domino Finn's Afterlife Online books where uh, the character is... Uh, the real world still exists, it didn't get blown up like in Viridian Gate, but the MC is dead and he's only living on through a virtual existence. There you understand what they're doing because like they don't have a choice. Uh, if you just get teleported into a game or you're dead and you're living only through this afterlife online. But in this book, there doesn't seem to be a big driving goal for why he's playing the game. It seems more or less like he's just kind of like bored and like, okay, this is something to do to pass the time. He doesn't really have a strong desire here. Uh, I think that... So I don't like to uh, recommend like this is the one true way to write because writing is about infinite number of trade-offs. Everything you do has a pro and a con and you've sort, of got to, you've sort of got to be able to balance them out so that overall the pros outweigh the cons. But here there needs to be some alignment between what the character wants and what the game is going to give him. And that doesn't occur until about halfway through the book in the previously mentioned fad punching scene. Whenever that takes place, then it's like, oh, he, he has to play the game because he needs money to pay off this fine. But that only takes place midway through, and it's not really a strong reason. Um, so as an example of what would have a much better character alignment, the driving force of this book is that he wants to get with a girl. He sort of has a crush on her, and she's one of his bandmates. Uh, it would be much better if like, he was playing this game because he wanted to get the money to uh, be able to afford a recording duet with her. So he's written like all these songs and he's like, us two together, we can do that. And that would give him time alone with her and that would sort of be his goal. He's like, I need to win this game because I need to get the girl, right? Um, and with that, that brings me to my uh, sort of related criticism to that, which is he has a hard time with his crush, like uh, telling her, that he wants her, but there doesn't seem to be a reason for that. Uh, it just makes him seem kind of like a very weak MC because she's obviously into him and there are no barriers in between them. So in any sort of like romance based storyline, and that's what this is, uh, there needs to be sort of a will they, won't they dynamic setup where, you know, where we're rooting for the MC, but we know, oh, there's just this thing that's in the way. That's sort of how Castle worked, Luther. Uh, any number of shows where the, the male and female protagonist set up. They're perfect for each other, but there's something in the way. Here, there's nothing really in the way. Uh, so it just seems like he's, he's just a total wimp. Um, so what would be a recommendation uh, that I would have done with that? 
Well, he makes Thad the bad guy, and she dated Thad in the past. Um, I would have made it so that Thad was continuing to date her, and Thad was not such an obvious asshole. I would make Thad really charming, in fact, superficially charming to her in particular. But when, um, whenever he plays the game Thad, he's a total asshole to his huntresses and to his monsters. And I have that, again, tying into the game and what's going on with it, uh, showing that he's not actually a nice person. He's just a guy who pretends to be nice, but anytime he's in charge or he has any sort of power, he becomes a complete tempot tyrant. And using that, sort of getting her to look at the MC, who's nice to his huntresses, who has a great relationship with his monsters, and to go, okay, this is a guy who's actually nice and who actually is caring, versus this is a guy who's just pretending to care. Um, and then... Uh, Thad steals the female love interest's uh, code for her to get into the game, and then he just gives it back at the end for, for no real reason. Uh, this creates a problem because it removes some of the dramatic tension because there's a final choice that the MC has to make in the game, which is sort of to join uh, this virtual network of training facilities where his monsters and his huntresses can basically live in their, their own little mini heaven, or he can get an extra code and that will allow him to let another human player into the game and to join part of his uh, team. And because she, because Thad just gives back the code, it's like, well, what's, there's no real choice there. Of course he's going to pick the, the heaven scenario. He's not going to pick the code. Um, I think it would be much better if Thad had uh, kept the code. Um, and so the final choice is like, okay, do I get her the code or do I uh, go with this heaven scenario for my huntresses? Then, you know, he's going to pick the heaven, of course, but that pushes us into the second book because now we know, okay, he's, got to, he's going to have to do another tournament. Why is he going to do another tournament? Because he wants to get with the girl and he wants her to be sort of part of his life, and now he needs that. So, again, propels us forward into the story. Uh, so, story is fun. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in there, but uh, some of the alignments between uh, the character and what's going on in the story don't jive up, so I've got to dock one star for that. So, again, final review, four stars out of five, would recommend.